Hello, my name is Boys and girls, thank you for joining me once again here for another thrilling episode of Who's Wrong on the Interwebs. It is unfortunately recidivist defenders once again. It is Lame Norton, who continues to be lame and uh, continues to be wrong about almost everything that comes out of his ridiculous gob on any matter of anything he has to talk about. Uh, today, Lame's wrong about cholesterol. What a shock. We'll deal with that uh, in a point-wise fashion in our usual, both educational and amusing style uh, I'm I'm quite sure. Uh, in the meantime, though, for anyone who has had your head under a rock and doesn't know who Lame Norton is, Lame is a gentleman who has on more than one occasion publicly stated that it is his belief that the first law of thermodynamics states that mass is conserved. Well, Lame, it doesn't uh, say anything remotely similar to that. In fact, um, it doesn't mention mass at all. It explicitly excludes mass from its dictates altogether. Uh, mostly, though, the reason that the first law of thermodynamics does not state that mass is conserved lame is because it fucking isn't. <laughs> okay? Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, lame, um, go ahead, be wrong, as usual, and we'll put you right wherever that is. And spoiler, boys and girls, guess where that'll be? That's right. Fucking everywhere. All right, off you go, lame. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome back to What The Fitness. You know what time it is. Like, comment, subscribe for Al Gore. What do we have this week? We have somebody who is becoming a regular guest now on What The Fitness, and that is our good friend, Dana White's own. Also, it seems that Lame Norton is completely incapable of doing a video without 700,000 jump cuts. It's incredible. Personal longevity guru, Gary Brecker. Let's see what Gary has to say about LDL cholesterol. I'm sure it is gonna be right in line with all of the scientific literature, and he's not going to embellish, exaggerate, or misrepresent claims at all. Here's I would suggest that if somebody is likely to do that, lame, it's you, son, because you're incompetent, totally fucking incompetent. The myth about cholesterol, guys. I mean, I'll tell you this right now. Cholesterol is the most maligned and misunderstood compound in the entire human body. Actually, it's one of the most studied compounds in the human body. What's that got to do with the fact that it's the most maligned? Nothing at all, Lane. Lame. Sorry, I pronounced your name wrong there. Lame. L-A-M-E. Lame Norton. The two things are completely unrelated. Tens of thousands of published research data. N none of which inform us in any way on causality as that regards any aspect of the so-called problems with so-called LDL cholesterol, which doesn't even exist, by the way, lame. You're talking about something that does not exist. LDL is not cholesterol. LDL cholesterol does not exist, lame. Okay, what's next? I don't know how you can malign a compound also. Can you just imagine poor little cholesterol? Oh, for God's sake, lame. You really are, aren't you? Absolutely true to your name. Lame as fuck. You malign a compound by blaming it for some kind of health problem without any evidence or whatsoever extant anywhere in the literature that can support that claim. That's how you malign a, a, um, a compound, which doesn't even exist, by the way. Sitting in the corner. Yeah, that's where Lame should stay, sitting in the corner silently with his head bowed for all time. Why doesn't anyone want to be friends with me? Because you're an ass monkey, Lame Norton. Because you're a complete fuck trumpet. Because you're an ignorant Dunning-Kruger sufferer of the highest order. And because you're a fucking liar. Straight out liar. You claimed in a message to Greg Douchebag very recently that I made a claim publicly to work at a given university. A claim I have never made publicly, ever. You also claim that that university has no record of me, which is also false. They do have a record of me. I actually did work at the university that you are referring to, Lame, some 20 years ago. 21 years ago. Okay? 
I've worked at many other universities since then. Okay, idiot. What's next? I'm involved in the plasma membrane. I hope with membrane fluidity. Why do you not love me? Because you're an idiot, lame. Poor cholesterol. Right? We have been taught that high cholesterol leads to cardiovascular disease, and that's not true. There's no published evidence anywhere in the peer-reviewed clinical literature linking elevated levels of LDL cholesterol on their own to cardiovascular disease. Causally, which is what he, the pre-qualifier for the statement he made there. And he's right. There is absolutely not one single data point extant anywhere in the literature that can causally link so-called LDL cholesterol, which still doesn't exist, by the way, with any negative health outcome of any kind. None. <laughs> okay. This is, you know, ridiculous laughter coming from a buffoon who doesn't even understand that mass is not conserved. And who is now going to misrepresent what the bloke just said completely, because that's the only way these turds can attempt to big themselves up and tear others down by misrepresenting what others said. He is talking about evidence of cause and effect. It is absent. He is correct. Absolutely correct and unassailable on that. So, you use this word linking. I don't think it means what you think it means. There oh, God. No, what's the point here, Lane? What are you trying to get at? Other than you are misrepresenting what this man has just said. There are mountains of evidence linking cholesterol to cardiovascular disease. No, there isn't. Not causally, not at all. Not one single data point exists making the linkage. He is talking about causality. He did disclaim the statement before he made it. As such, you are misrepresenting him. You are a turd. You are a fucking liar, lame Norton. Now, linking and associations are not sufficient to establish causation. Correct, and that is what he is talking about, you turd. However, one of the difficulties we have with understanding disease... Put your fucking hands in your pockets, lame, and fucking keep them there. ...is that you cannot do 20-year randomized control trials. So? Whose problem is that, lame? Whose fucking problem is that? People who want to claim causality and are unable to do so because we cannot do the work that is required to underpin a claim of causality. It's not my problem. It's yours, lame. You want to say the stuff is causal, then you back it up with some evidence. It does not exist. Whoopsie-daisy, pop yourself to fuck. Don't pass go or collect $200. And when it comes to something like heart disease, for example, if you did, let's say, a randomized control trial of low saturated fat versus high saturated fat. Now you're talking about saturated fat, which is not so-called LDL cholesterol. Is it lame? No, it isn't. So you don't even know what you're fucking talking about, changing fucking topics every three seconds. Fat producing different levels of cholesterol in people. And you did that for two years or even five years, and you didn't people in their 40s or 50s, it's still going to be really hard to see differences between groups. And the reason is... Because there fucking isn't much difference. That's why lame. In other words, this so-called vastly important thing that we must all absolutely keep an eye on, this cholesterol, makes no fucking difference to speak of, even over long terms, in associative studies in so-called prospective cohort studies. I don't know why they're called prospective. They are retrospective. Incidence studies reports. Naturalistic observations with no control. Epididly, doodly, moodly mology. Not science. Heart disease is a lifetime exposure risk. The no, not risk. Incidence. They're not the same thing, Lame. The use of the word risk by epidemiologists is entirely inappropriate. Entirely inappropriate. Risk is a cause and effect statement. It needs to be underpinned with cause and effect data. It still doesn't exist, so pop yourself directly back to fuck. The amount of LDL cholesterol you're exposed to during your entire life is going to be one of the determining factors. There you go, determining factor. That's a cause and effect statement, lame. It's another example of your fucking destitution of competence to speak about science. 
You are an absolute turd. You are a boy in short pants academically. You're also a fucking coward and a liar as well. Along with genetics, which is probably much more powerful, to be honest, but part of that genetic... Honest? You wouldn't know honest if it bit you on the ass, Lame Norton. You wouldn't know the difference between your ass and a hole in the ground. You're a fool. Risk is how much LDL cholesterol you naturally secrete. No, not risk. No. When it's a lifetime exposure risk... No, not risk. Still. You really have to look out over 10, 20, 30 years. Oh, by the way, a two-year randomized control trial, extremely expensive, extremely hard to get the funding for, extremely hard to execute. So they don't really exist that much. Other they don't exist at all. There are no experimental studies on human beings with respect to any aspect of human nutrition and any long-term hard health outcome of any kind. This is a vacuum. There is no evidence in that area at all. Can we move on? Other than a scant few, and they don't really show differences. And so people have used that and say, ah, see, this doesn't make a difference. Let me give you an example. It doesn't make a difference, a clinically meaningful difference, over long-term exposure either, even though that's not remotely cause and effect data. It's, it's exposure versus incidence without any fucking control at all to speak of. It's a naturalistic observation. No difference to speak of. Because, precisely because, the thing that you're proposing as a causal agent in the disease process fucking isn't lame. It's not a causal um, component of heart disease. It doesn't even fucking exist, this so-called LDL cholesterol you're talking about. It is still non-existent lame. Example, a financial example, because I think these are really helpful. If I no, no, an example, an analogy which is inept, inept, and destitute of competence is not helpful. It just muddies the waters. Look at two people. And they start investing their money, and they both put in $10,000. Great. What does that got to do with cholesterol? Absolutely fucking nothing. At all. It does not inform us in any way on cholesterol, you pathetic turd. One person is getting a 7% interest rate, and the other person is getting an 8% interest rate. What has that got to do with cholesterol? Still nothing. And then we look at how much money they have gotten in interest after a year or two. It's going to be like maybe a couple hundred bucks. Great, but what has that got to do with cholesterol and heart disease? Nothing whatsoever. If that. Probably less. And so you could look at that and see, ah, uh, see, not a significant difference. But if you look at it over 40 years, it is going to be a huge difference. That yes, absolutely, but that still has nothing whatsoever to do with cholesterol and heart disease incidents at all. Not a damn thing. 1% difference in interest probably is going to lead to like a doubling or tripling of money is my guess. And so it's so you, you're just guessing even. Why didn't you actually do that? If you're going to use the analogy, the completely inept analogy, why don't you actually do the fucking math other than you can't count probably lame? My word. Again, it's a lifetime exposure sort of thing. Yeah, differences in LDL cholesterol may not make a difference over a year or two years or even five years. But if or even 40 or 50, because it doesn't. If you look out 10, 20, 30 years, it definitely makes a difference. No, it fucking doesn't. Lame. You have misinterpreted that data, which is entirely in line with what we would expect from you, an incompetent buffoon with not the first idea about what you're talking about. Good. What do we need to establish causation? Well, one, we need to show that there is a link. There is absolutely a link. No, there fucking isn't, lame. There is no meaningful link whatsoever between this non-existent molecule that you're talking about, this non-existent compound, LDL cholesterol, and heart disease. Not at all. If you look at epidemiology... I have done very carefully over more than... 25 years lame. That's one of the things I'm absolutely quite expert in, actually, and you are not. What are you going to say about it, though? This will be funny. People who have higher levels of LDL tend to have higher levels of heart disease. No, they don't meaningfully whatsoever. Wrong. And you see that with the Framingham study. People say, well, you know, that, that neglects HDL and inflammation. No, no, no. In the Framingham study, it doesn't matter 
If you have low inflammation or high inflammation or low HDL or high HDL, if you stratify those amongst people who have low inflammation and high HDL, for example, if you then separate out people who have low inflammation, high HDL, Blah, 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 blah. Finish. So now you're just waffling and making noise, lame Norton, talking about a study that you don't fucking understand at all in an incompetent buffoon style, and the claims you're making are false, demonstrably, absolutely false. There is no difference in the incidence of heart disease that is meaningful of any practical or clinical utility in populations on the basis of cholesterol exposure, this is not discussed anywhere in the literature, even as an association, because there is no decent measurement ongoingly and repeatedly of exposure to the so-called agent. You're making shit up because you are incompetent. Then of that subsection, who has low LDL versus high LDL, the people with high LDL still have a higher risk of heart disease. No, they don't. Risk, no. Risk is a cause and effect statement. False again, lame Norton. Disease. That's with low inflammation and low HDL. That is what we call an independent risk factor. So no, it isn't. You can call it whatever you like, it isn't a risk factor. Risk is a cause and effect statement. It requires evidence in the form of interventional research science. Do you have any of that lame or wait? No, I thought not. Okay, we'll carry on then. Wrong again, lame. So the link is there, and we see that in the cohort studies as well. No, we don't see a meaningful difference whatsoever, in fact, lame. Wrong again. No, we don't see a meaningful difference. You're talking about statistically significant differences in mean values without even looking at signal to noise ratio, actually. What does statistical significance tell us about clinical significance? Meaning, utility, lame. Absolutely fucking nothing. Nothing at all. There is no clinically meaningful difference in subpopulations in the expression of heart disease outcomes as that relates to any aspect of any compound in the diet or in the metabolic pathways, really, be that thing existent or otherwise, lame. You are making shit up. Stop it. Is there a mechanism? Yes. No, there fucking isn't. No. We know that LDL cholesterol doesn't fucking exist, lame. Can penetrate the endothelium. We so fucking what? You're talking about LDL particles? They are not cholesterol, lame. Not, not cholesterol at all. They are lipoprotein carriers of cholesterol. And they are supposed to infiltrate the wall. They are there to do a specific task, you buffoon. We know that. It has been established. It has been shown repeatedly. Yes, and that's not a mechanism of disease. So there's the mechanism. No! Still no, lame. One of us is a cardiovascular pathophysiologist, by the way, and one of us is you, lame Norton. Okay? Idiot. We have the randomized control trials to support it. Well, again... No, you fucking don't. And we talked about it's very hard to run a randomized control trial for... Right, so the answer is no, you don't have a randomized control trial to back up any such claim of mechanism. So it's a mechanistic speculation and it's false, lame Norton. Should we move on? Two, three years or even five years, which you would need, or probably more like 10 years. And so more like 40 or 50. So I was somebody who thought, kind of like Gary, the prevailing thinking 15 years ago, well... You know what? It's probably not LDL, it's the ratio. It's not LDL. It's not the ratio of lipoproteins. It's not any specific protein, APOB, APOE. It's none of those things that causes heart disease to occur. It is not related cause and effect to any of the lipoproteins, nor any of the lipids carried by those lipo lipoprotein carriers of those lipids. None of it. Issue of LDL to HDL. No. And it's not. Then they came out with drugs that raised HDL. 
And guess what the drugs that raised HDL did? Absolutely nothing. Did So do the drugs that reduce cholesterol. They do absolutely nothing as well. So what's your fucking point? Not decrease the risk of cardiac... No, not risk. No. There are no studies that inform us on risk of heart disease as a result of the taking or not taking of any drug of any kind whatsoever. Stop making shit up. Vascular disease. HDL is just a marker of metabolic health, really. No, it fucking isn't. HDL is a lipoprotein carrier of lipids. It's not a marker of anything. Not much else. However, when the Mendelian randomization trials started coming... Fuck, you really are stupid, aren't you, lame Norton? Mendelian randomization. Oh my god, you really are painfully stupid. Have you even read this? I bet you haven't. Out. Mendelian randomization basically works by randomizing people based on their genetic polymorphisms. <laughs> no, it doesn't, because that's not random. That, that's a self-selection. And the people in the bin of people with genetically elevated lipoproteins are made up of people with sometimes hundreds of different, completely different polymorphisms, different SNPs. And those populations phenotypically are not match paired at all with a unpolymorphismized population. They are completely different at the outset. There's nothing randomized about this. this these are self-selections. These are groups of people physiologically who are phenotypically different at the outset in many regards. We're talking um, body mass index. We're talking expression incidence of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We're talking about differences in chronic hypertension. We're talking about all sorts of differences, lame Norton. This is not science. This is no more science than is epididly doodly moodly 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 This is just utter, utter crack pottery. And you are an absolute ass monkey. You're a fool. You are a boy in short pants academically who is completely out of his depth and out of his lane. Okay? Get back in your fucking lane, lame Norton. So we have some people based on genetic polymorphisms who will secrete higher LDL and some who will secrete lower LDL. For all sorts of different reasons also, confounded as fuck in terms of the fact that they are completely phenotypically different. At the outset, we don't have a comparison to make here, ergo, we don't have science, we don't have any decent inference of any kind. Pop yourself directly back to fuck you absolute ignorant little boy. So they looked at these folks over the course of their lifetime and how likely they were to develop heart disease and or... No, not likely. Not how likely at all. It's, it's, it's a report on incidents, retrospectively. And it is confounded. We are done here. We're finished with that. Can we move on? I for heart disease. Did you know that it is an absolute linear effect? I no, it isn't an absolute linear effect at all. See those lines? going upwards and downwards from each of those dots, almost none of which fall on this so-called absolute linearity that you're talking about, Lane. Do you see what those are? They're error bars. And you see how those data points are not on a line? The line is imposed through that data set as a least squares regression, Lane. What, what, what are we looking at here? an association between this and that. Ice cream sales and sunburn. Do we deal with the risk of sunburn by banning the sale of ice creams at beachside resorts? Lame, is that what you're suggesting? Is that what we should do? Because you have, number one, mischaracterized this so-called absolutely linear effect, which isn't absolutely linear, because that would mean the ice squared value would be 1.0. Is it? No? Pop yourself back to fuck you ignorant little turd. I, I'll never forget, there is a chart based on LDL exposure. Basically- Exposure. LDL exposure. How has that been measured, lame Norton? Did they get a bunch of people and measure their LDL levels every single day, continuously, for decades on end? No? 
Back to fuck your pop then, son. Exposure. Get fucked. Showing that people who are exposed to more LDL throughout the course... Uh, they haven't measured that, lame. I've just explained that. Even stupid people understand. What's your problem? ...of their life. That they're Other than fucking arrogance, an ego problem, and an inability. A pathological inability to tell the truth. Hmm. Is a or, or, or even an understanding of your own level of incompetence. Your Dunning-Kruger absolutely drops from every single pore. Some. Linear effect on the risk of heart disease. No, not risk. No. Not at all. Associations cannot inform on risk. Not at all. False. There's your randomized control trial. No, wrong. That is not a randomized control trial, you stupid little boy. Nothing is controlled there. You have a bin of people who genetically happen to express a higher level of one of the lipoproteins for any number of, or any combination of a whole bunch of different genetic polymorphisms, bin together and lumped together as if they are a single population for some, in some respect, they're not. They're not even equated in terms of their phenotypic presentation with their so-called controls. Get the fuck out of here. You stupid little boy. You absolute fucking turd. What's next? Over the course of a lifetime. No. That's what's great about Mendelian randomization. No, it fucking isn't, you idiot. You are so fucking incompetent, it's painful. Mr. Masses Conserved. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. I'm never going to get over that. Masses Conserved, says Lame Norton. The first law of thermodynamics says so, says Lame Norton, even though it doesn't say that. And Mass is not conserved. Good. Also, now, we can add to the list of perlers from this turd. M Mendelian randomization is a control trial. No, it fucking isn't lame. It's another form of associative mishmash. It's another ill-disciplined form of naturalistic observation. It is not science any more than epididly doodly moodly -mology. It's a form of epididly moodly -mology. You idiot. You incompetent buffoon. What's next? is because it's essentially a randomized controlled trial. No, it fucking isn't. No. Trial over the course of people's lives. No, it's nothing of the sort. You incompetent buffoon. This idea that LDL is just misunderstood and picked on and misaligned and poor LDL. Straw man, ridiculous fucking straw man. Cholesterol. No, there's actually a large body of consistent evidence. No, there fucking isn't lame Norton. Wrong again. Wrong again. No. To show that LDL is an independent risk factor. No. Risk is a cause and effect statement. There is no evidence whatsoever. Not one single data point. It does not exist lame. You're a fucking liar. You're also fucking incompetent. Absolutely, utterly fucking brain dead in terms of this material. You, you don't know dick about fuck here, son. Completely out of your lane. Completely out with your competence. You're dumb. For disease. And this shows how powerful it is. No, <laughs> there's no power because there is no cause and effect data. None at all. So the other thing you really need to do to show some sort of causation. Also, tell me what LDL cholesterol is, Lame. I'm, I'm still waiting for, for an explanation of what that even is because it does not exist. Still. Should we wait for an explanation? What is LDL cholesterol? Wow. Is a dose response. No. You need an experiment for dose response claim. There isn't one still. Again, we have the dose response. No, you fucking don't. No, you don't. You don't have a controlled experimental trial on that. Fuck your incompetence is absolutely unfucking believable. Based on the Mendelian randomization. No! Still! No. Trials. No. That's not a trial. That's a naturalistic observation with no control at all. It's not science. Still. And even going from like a medium or lowish level of LDL down to a lower level of LDL even further decreases the risk. No. There is nothing existing anywhere in the literature that can inform us on risk in any way. That is a cause and effect statement. Pop yourself directly, squarely, back to fuck. 
So again, this is very clearly shown in this research. No, it fucking isn't. Which Gary is either unfamiliar with or... I'm very familiar with it. I am, among other things, lame, Norton, a cardiovascular pathophysiologist. You are not. Okay? I'm also a scientist. Another thing, you are not. ...are purposefully ignoring. And this research has been around since the mid-2000s. Again, when I got into grad school in the mid-2000s, right before this research came out, I was of the opinion that LDL cholesterol didn't really matter. It's because, well, it's not that it doesn't matter. It is not a causal agent in the development of atherosclerosis, heart disease. Clearly, patently, without any question, unequivocally, it is not involved cause and effect in this disease process. And it was the ratio of HDL to LDL. And then over the no. course of the next 10 years, I actually changed my mind because enough... Mind, he says. <laughs> oh, Lame's claiming to have a mind now. Goodness. Wow. Evidence came out to show that now... Lame, you wouldn't know evidence if it bit you on the ass, son. You have no fucking idea what you're talking about or what evidence even is. You think Mendelian randomization is a control trial. You think mass is conserved? <laughs> oh, fuck. Ooh. Oh, go on, though, Lane. Uh, it appears to be a independent risk factor. No. Not risk. No. For heart disease. No. False. Okay, that's only about a fourth of the way through this video, and I've been getting very long-winded, so let's see what else... Yes, you have, and you've been wrong about absolutely everything you've had to say. Completely fucking wrong, incompetent, and in the highest degree possible... It's embarrassing for you. Frankly, son, totally fucking embarrassing for you. Gary has to say. Right? You have to have a corresponding increase in triglycerides. No, you don't. That's false. Right? Not true. Once again, if we look at these studies where they show low triglyceride or high triglyceride at both of those levels, if you... It's also not causally involved in heart disease. Triglyceride is also not a problematic issue here in terms of established cause and effect agents for heart disease. So, back to fuck. You have low triglycerides and low LDL, you have very low risk factor. No, not risk factor. No, there is no evidence on risk. Still lame Norton. If you have low triglycerides and high LDL, you have a higher risk factor. No, you fucking don't. Wrong again than those who have low triglycerides and low LDL. No, wrong again. Another misinterpretation of a data set that you are incompetent to read, lame Norton. Same thing at the higher level. No, false. Wrong again. Again, independent risk factor. No, false. Absolutely, patently, unequivocally false. Wrong. Which apparently Gary doesn't quite understand. No. The person here that doesn't understand lame is you. There are many things you don't understand, including basic physics tenets like whether or not mass is conserved. Oh dear, 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 dear. Lots of mileage out of that one to be had still. So it's actually not the amount of cholesterol in your blood, it is the size of the cholesterol. No, that's wrong too. False. Molecule that ah. The smaller cholesterol gets, the more dangerous it gets. No, false. Completely false. The larger it is, the healthier it is. No, false. So the question is, how do we... He's basically saying smaller, more dense... We heard what he said, Lane. Okay? Unlike you, we are not fucking stupid. We are not morons, Lane. We heard what he said, and he's wrong. LDL particles are more atherogenic because they more easily penetrate the endothelium. He didn't say that. You added it. That is true. No, it isn't. Small LDL particles more easily penetrate the endothelium. So? That's got nothing to do with risk or the development of any disease process of any kind. They also carry less cholesterol in them. Large LDL particles do not penetrate the endothelium as easy, but they still do. And they carry more cholesterol. Do you know what the net difference is? Bas nothing. Basically nothing. They both are equally atherogenic. Which is not at all. Right, good. Can we move on? When you consider the amount of cholesterol that can get deposited by each. So yes, smaller particles penetrate more easily, but they carry less cholesterol. You said that, Lane. We got it the first time, and you still haven't provided a single scrap of evidence that cholesterol 
is involved causally in heart disease because it fucking isn't at all. So it's less of a, a problem on a per molecule. It's not a problem at all on a per molecule basis because cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Basis, large LDL particles carry more cholesterol. So on a per molecule basis, yeah, the ones that penetrate the large LDL particles deposit more cholesterol. So that's what they're supposed to do. That's the whole point. The cholesterol is being deposited there for a reason. So again, at the end of the day, it's a wash. And again, this was some, something I used to say. This is something I used to parent. Well, it's really the size of the LDL. Well, you're just a fucking ignorant little boy, though, lame. You don't know dick about fuck. Why would you be saying anything whatsoever about cholesterol and heart disease? It's not your area of expertise. It's mine. Okay? You're out of your lane. The oxidation status, this and that. And then you find out that when they actually compare these straight up apples to apples, it doesn't seem to really matter. They so, don't compare apples with apples. There is no science comparing apples with apples with regard to cholesterol and heart disease of any kind extant anywhere in the literature. These studies do not exist. The question is, how do we drive down the size of cholesterol? We um, don't need to do that. The body does that by itself according to its own design, which is the pinnacle of well, probably 13,800 million years of of uh, evolution or so. It's got quite good at it. It knows what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. We should probably just let the body get on with it, frankly. I'm, I'm sorry, how do we drive up the size of cholesterol? We drive down the triglyceride. And I'll no, that's false too. I'll explain that to you in a minute. This is an insulin... Who the hell is this guy anyway, this Gary Bricker? He's just as wrong, just as ignorant as Lane Norton, clearly. It's incredible how many people think themselves qualified to speak on this topic on the interwebs who fucking are not. It's amazing. Boggles the mind. Issue, not a triglyceride issue. <laughs> because when insulin rises <laughs> in the bloodstream, we think insulin's primary War role is Cheeto. Sugar. That's not true. The primary role of insulin is to block any other form of energy use in the body. If insulin is... So it doesn't block other forms of energy use. It reduces the usage of other forms of energy because, yes, when you have carbohydrate into the body after you've filled glycogen out, you have to oxidize it because it can't really get stored as body fat. <gasps> False. Absolute fucking rubbish. Again, lame Norton. Doesn't even understand basic biochemistry. No surprise given he doesn't understand basic physics even. Mass is conserved. <laughs> Good. Less than... You no, know, lame. False. 2% uh, of the fat that is stored in adipose tissue originates as carbohydrates. So what? And according to whom? They have the metabolic tracer studies to show this. They? Who's they? And under what conditions was this test done lame? You can't just make a throwout comment like that without backing it up, without doing an analysis. You want to mention some research here, then we need to, let's get this, let's get it up on the screen and have a look at it and see what exactly what was done. No? Still? Okay. Radio. So yeah, you have to oxidize it, but it also doesn't wind up in fat tissue. It, it absolutely does, Lane. Absolutely it fucking does. No question. No little study with some traces that's probably been done with so many holes in the methodology I'll probably find within two minutes if you actually bother to even cite those studies. No. Lame. Wrong again. Which, uh, uh, Gary just happened to miss that part. It's how you cannot burn fat. It includes fat in the blood. People that eat the most sugar have the highest blood fat. So we're going to bring insulin down, lower the triglyceride, increase the size of cholesterol, and that will be a marker for longevity. No, it won't. Not for living too short. You know, if you say something confidently enough... It says Lame Norton, like, you know, mass is conserved, and the first law of thermodynamics says so. <laughs> oh, fuck. Woo. With enough bravado and enough marketing dollars. I don't know if I'm ever going to stop enjoying that quite so much. Absolutely, though. If you want to take advice from this buffoon, this turd, this ridiculous child academically, this little boy here, Lame Norton, if you want to take advice from him, it's your funeral. You go ahead. You do, you do that. See what? See how it turns out for you. Behind you, a room of people will believe you.
a certain amount of people will believe you. This is such a normal, straight down the line, low carb dogma, which I don't know why the low carb community has gotten behind this. Like you Because it fucking works, lame Norton. Because it is the species appropriate, species specific diet unequivocally, as established by actual science, no question, we're done here. That's why. You can still promote a high fat, low carb diet without basically trying to evangelize saturated fat. These Do you have a point to make here, lame? of any value to anybody on any topic. What are you saying here? We don't need to evangelize anything. All we need to do is to suggest to people that the best course of action is to eat a species appropriate, species specific diet to satiety. That will lead you to the highest likelihood of the expression phenotypically of the most robust health, the most robust lifespan, the most enjoyment of life, etc. Because it's obvious, the reasons for it are obvious. Should an animal eat what that animal has evolved to eat? Well, of course it should. We're done. Does that involve any significant amount of carbohydrates for human beings? No, it fucking doesn't. Fact. We're done here. And you, and you were done as soon as you said mass is conserved and the first law of thermodynamics says so. And calories in, calories out though, lame. You were finished right back there. You're done. Permanently. As soon as you say that publicly, you're fucked. You're done. People know you are now a crackpot. Not a scientist. They know that without question because those, those are all things you've said. Calories in, calories out though. Mass is conserved and thermodynamics says so. You're fucked. You have nothing of value to add to the society any further lane except for grist for my humor mill and the butt end of my jokes from now until the end of eternity. Okay? Sorry about that. These two things do not have to be linked together, but for whatever reason, because I guess low carb wants to say, eat your butter, eat your bacon. Fat's not bad for you. There's no fat. Of course it's not bad for you. That are bad for you. Saturated animal fat, or largely saturated animal fat. Not bad for you. Fact. Plant fats absolutely are bad for you. Demonstrably. Plant carbohydrates, any carbohydrates to speak of really, at any, any, any level of, of, over about, well, and there's an individual tolerance to carbohydrates, but you, you ought to keep your carbohydrate intake significantly below 50 grams a day total in all forms. Fiber's not necessary either, so before you go there, we're done. You, they've had to like climb on this whole LDL is, you know, a plot by the Illuminati to get you to eat more vegetables. This guy who claimed- No, not at all. It's just a false idea put forward by a false prophet at some point in order to subserve that false prophets need to publish something by cherry picking data and misrepresenting data and by uh, managing to get a consensus for his ridiculous fucking ideas together. That's all. Claims he can tell you when you can die. I just, I mean, if you believe that, once again, I own the Skyway Bridge here in Tampa. I would be willing to sell it to you because if you believe this guy, you could also be the proud new owner of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. All right, guys. Hope you liked the video. No, lame as usual. Ridiculous, pustulous, excremental nonsense from start to finish. A buffoon completely out of his depth, speaking right outside his lane of um, competence and understanding, which is nothing lame. The, the PhD certificate you hold in nutritional science, you might as well fucking set light to that thing, son, because you don't know the first thing about that either. Mass is concerned. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Calories in, calories out, though. Anyway, join me next time when someone else will be wrong, but not as long, uh, long? Not as wrong as Lame Norton. He's not long. Not long at all. Mm. Long-winded. Mm. Right, anyway, I hope you enjoyed all the jump cuts. Did you count them? Incredible, isn't it? Right, uh, let's have some music.